Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, we're going to learn to determine the percentage composition. We'll just fix that up. Percentage composition uh, and empirical formulae. So what are our learning intentions? We're learning to determine the percentage composition of a compound from its chemical formula. So if I tell you H2O, for example, can you work out the percentage hydrogen, percentage oxygen we would expect in a sample? And then the opposite, determine the empirical formula of a compound from experimental data. So if we did an experiment and found water has a certain mass of hydrogen and mass of oxygen, can you work out the formula from, from that? So they're almost exact opposites, but not exactly. And you'll have achieved this if you can do the, the calculations and get the correct answer and have clear laying out, that's important. So let's start with percentage composition. Remember percentage is just the part divided by the whole times 100. You do that for any percentage calculation. So for this case, we're interested in the mass of one element in the compound as a fraction of the whole mass of the compound. So we just work out the mass of, of that element, divide it by the total mass of the whole thing, times it by 100. So let's take Fe203. If you had one mole of that, you can work out the mass of iron in one mole of that, and you can work out the total molar mass of one mole of that. The iron, it's just two times 55.9. You look that up on the periodic table. So one mole of this would have 111.8 grams of iron. What's the total mass of one mole? Well, two times 55.9 plus three times 16, that should be, three times 16 or 48, and you get 159.8 grams. So one mole of iron oxide is 159.8. So you can easily do the percentage calculation. It's 111.8, the iron divided by 159.8, the total mass of one mole, times it by 100%, you get 70%. So we would say the iron oxide is 70% iron, and that's by mass. So we can do percentage composition. What about the other way around? Uh, finding an empirical formula. Uh, empirical just means from observation or investigation. So this is meaning what formula do we get just from analyzing the compound, doing investigations. If we experimentally measure the percentage composition of a compound, we can work backwards to determine the formula. So for water, let's think first of all, just of what we know of water. Each molecule contains two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen. So we know the molecular formula is H2O. Molecular formula meaning we actually know what's in a molecule. It's got two hydrogens, one oxygen, that's what it is. But what if we did it experimentally? Well, we could analyze a sample, use electrolysis like we did in class, and we would find the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen is two to one. And so the formula we get is H2O. We call that the empirical formula because we got it by analyzing, by investigation, empiricism. Now in this case, they're exactly the same. And you might think, why have two different words, molecular formula, empirical formula, but they're often not the same. So have a look at this example. This is a uh, protein. Right? And you can see it's got carbon and it's got hydrogen around it. Um, when we work out the molecular formula, well, it has three carbon, it has six hydrogen, so we get C3H6. That's the molecular formula. But if we just analyze the sample to find the percentage carbon and the percentage hydrogen, and we worked out the ratio of atoms, we would find there are twice as many hydrogen atoms as carbon atoms. We would get a carbon-hydrogen ratio of one to two. And when we make a formula based on that, we would just get CH2. We can't see the individual molecules when we analyze the sample. We can't see that there's three carbon joined to six hydrogen. All we see when we analyze it is that there's twice as many hydrogen atoms in that sample as carbon atoms. We don't know what it is, we would just know it's CH2 as an empirical formula, meaning it could be CH2, it could be C2H4, it could be C3H6, as long as there's twice as many hydrogens as carbon. We don't know the molecular formula, but we know that experimentally there's twice as many hydrogens as carbons. That's why empirical formula is important. So if you've got your data uh, and you're trying to work out the empirical formula from your percentage composition, what do you do? Um, let's say we've analysed it. We won't do from percentage, we'll do from mass, but it's the same. Let's say we've got a substance that's 5.12 grams of lithium and 11.05 grams oxygen. This is lithium oxide. And we worked out that, out that by experiment. We took our lithium oxide, we broke it up somehow. We know the mass of each thing that was in the sample. How do we work out the empirical formula? Well, the first thing is we need to find the ratio of moles of each thing. And to get the moles, we need to divide that mass by the molar mass. Then we'll get a ratio of moles. Remember, we're, all, we're never working in uh, mass, 
I've got to change things to moles. So first step, divide the mass or percentage mass, if that's what you've got, of each element by its molar mass to get a ratio of moles. So in this case, uh, there's 5.12 grams of lithium, divide it by 6.9, the molar mass of lithium. There's 11.05 grams of oxygen, divide it by 16, the molar mass of oxygen. And we get a ratio of 0.74 moles of lithium to 0.37 moles of oxygen. That's actually a molar ratio now because we divided by the molar mass. Now we want to get nice whole numbers. So the second thing we do is we divide by the smallest number, in this case, 0.37. We divide both by 0.37 and we get two to one. And so we can see quickly that the formula is Li2O. Right, there's two lithium for every one oxygen. So we just divide by the, the molar mass and then we divide them by the smallest number to get a nice ratio. Now, sometimes you'll get a ratio like 2 to 1.5. What would you do then? Well, you want to double it to get rid of that half. If it's 2 to 1.5, you double it and you get 4 to 3. So if there are uh, halves in there or thirds, you want to multiply to get rid of those. So we would multiply by two if there are halves, multiply by three if there's clearly um, a third in there, multiply by four if there's clearly a quarter so that you get a nice whole number ratio. And it won't be exact. So the last thing you'll need to do, you probably can't see it under the box there, is round it off. So if you've got 2.03, would well, you round that off to two, right? That's just experimental error. Uh, if you got 5.27, well, that's close to five and a quarter. So probably you've got to multiply it by four. So uh, often you'll need to do step three or step four. Um, so have a go at doing some percentage composition and some empirical formula calculations.